What's going on, everybody? Pete Simonetti here for NYY News. My goodness, guys. I thought that maybe we would have a little break and there wouldn't be, you know, as much news to get mad at. You know what I mean? That there wouldn't be so much pins in your back, so to say, to thorns on your side to um, prompt you to get angry and to be upset with uh, where we are uh, currently when it comes to the Yankees. Um, couple of things I want to talk about today. One being Phil Nevin's comments to the New York Post. And I'm going to go over those quote by quote. So guys, please stay with me on this video because man, I got a lot to say. And then Brandon Cuddy, <laughs> cheerleader of the Beat Squad. Um, maybe, maybe one of the most idiotic, pathetic tweets today and article about the Red Sox fans being so mean to Garrett Cole. We'll talk about all this and how it correlate, correlates with where the Yankees currently are and the mentality of the New York Yankees, the booney, the booney ball guys. We'll discuss everything, and I'm sure they'll let the teddy bear back in. Uh, that'd be an Aaron Boone. But let's, uh, let's start with Phil Nevin. Guys, early on, I really thought Nevin was... Um, hard-nosed, you know what I mean, um, would take accountability for things, um, and would just be upfront and honest about things, he seemed like a, a, uh, a stand-up guy, you know, and now you read these New York Post comments, and he doesn't seem to stand up at all, seems very foolish, it actually kind of fits in with the Yankees, uh, with what we've seen from this club all year long, you know, since 2018, they've been turning the corner, per Aaron Boone, no beat writer, you know, calls him out on that, We've been doing it for three years now, Aaron. What's the problem? Um, but it fits right in. So let's just jump to it. Let's jump to it. Let's read the first one. This is all from the New York Post and uh, Phil Nevin. There was a lot of factors. I did see the low throw. It was offline as well. I factored into wet surface, which ended up being the demise because it was a quick skip into Bogart's glove. He made a great baseball play and threw home. Okay, next. I know what it looks like. I know what the situation is. I know what kind of third base coach I am. Pause. The worst in the league. I don't have the stats in front of me, but I don't think anybody else has got over 20-something men thrown out at home this year alone. Like you have, Phil. Accountability much? I made a play to win the game. No, you didn't. It didn't work out. It was a great baseball play on their side. In a big moment, it didn't go our way. Should have never happened. Continuing, there was one out, so you're not going to be a little. You're going to be a little more aggressive than with no outs. Understandable. With two outs, it would be a no-brainer. If it had ended up second and third and one out, and we don't score, I'd kick myself all night too. You don't have the over, this is Alex Rodriguez now. Alex Rodriguez said, so Alex Rodriguez is going, you know, kind of hard at this on the broadcast. You don't have to overthink that one, A-Rod said. I'm surprised at the magnitude of that mistake by Nevin in this situation. Here's Nevin's response to A-Rod. This is when the delusion really kicks in. This guy has never been in that situation. <laughs> but thinks he has a good idea of what baseball is in that spot, and he's wrong. He's never been in that position. Oh, my God. Phil Nevin, Alex Rodriguez probably has forgotten more about baseball than Nevin knows. And I'm not saying that Phil Nevin is not a smart baseball guy at all, but does he understand he's talking to a borderline, not even a borderline, who should be a Hall of Famer 150%, one of the greatest ball players that ever lived. And honestly, most people that know Alex says he's extremely intelligent when it comes to baseball. Sometimes you may disagree with him, but to sit there and say that Alex Rodriguez does not understand that situation, gotta be one of the most arrogant, ignorant statements I think you could potentially make. And of course it gotta come from a Yankee coach. Of course it has to come from a Yankee coach because you can't find any more ignorance than these guys. It's hard to find it. Aaron Boone thought they have a gap over competition. 
that teams are closing it. Teams have lapped us. There's no gap. This is pure delusion. And this is why the New York Yankees are now home. This is why I've been saying since the since May, the Yankees will never win under Aaron Boone. Because guess what? It's hard to win the World Series. And when your mentality is everything is okay and it's never us, it's never something we did, there's no accountability, you're never going to get there. And Phil Nevin is a prime example. This guy has never been in that situation, but thinks he has a good idea of what baseball is in that spot and he is wrong. <laughs> Oh, my God. Nevin defended what led up to the send. Let's read this one. Let's have some more laughs, guys. I didn't hesitate at all, said Nevin, who was among a contingent of players and coaches, including Aaron Boone, who were at Yankee Stadium on Wednesday. I was in the right position, made the right read, and had conviction in my send. But I get it. I get why people are upset and people are mad. A lot of things go through your head afterwards because we're packing our suitcases your suitcase should never return to Yankee Stadium. And it's sad because I tell you what, going back to what I talked about yesterday, this is the problem again with New York Yankee media is that you got guys like Ryan Rucco, who I talked about yesterday at work on Yes, CeCe Sabath. He was like a, a New York Yankee guy. He's just there. He's always going to be a New York Yankee guy. He doesn't want to ruin that at all. None of these guys state the obvious. My man has got, I think, and I might be wrong, 22 guys thrown out this year on his calls. His windmill. His windmill has gotten 22 guys thrown out this year. The biggest play of the game, as I said, in the moment, that was the game. He made the worst call ever. Everybody knows it was a bad call. My man said it was close. Again, there's a screenshot of the picture. Full picture. Plawecki got the ball. Judge isn't even in the frame. It wasn't close. Aaron Judge, I'm pretty sure, would tell you it wasn't close. This guy can't come out and go, it was, it was, it was a bad call in that situation. I'm wrong. There's no accountability. And these Yankee people can't even come out and go, well, it cost him his job, right? Obviously, he has to. Phil Nevin should not come back next year after this. Because Phil Nevin is a nice guy. And we can't criticize nice guys. But, you know, if, if Phil Nevin was, let's say, a winner, like a Tony La Russa, who gets a bad rap that he's a bad guy, whether you agree or not, we could shit on him all day. We'd be calling for his job. We'd have the pitchforks out. Calling for his job. But, but since Phil is a nice guy, it doesn't matter that he should have been rated as a great F third base coach. That doesn't mean shit at all. Because nice guys get saved by the media today. Nobody cares that the production is there. It's more important that he's a good guy. Because that's how production works in the real world, as I stated yesterday. I can make it easy for everybody. That's why, again, I keep, continue to repeat. NYY News right here should be the only spot that if you just want real, honest conversation that may differ among each person who's talking on our team, it's right here. I'm not going to sugarcoat nothing. <clears throat> I can say it right now. Nevin may be the nicest man on the planet. Nevin should not keep his job. There's nothing wrong with me saying that. That's not me tarnishing who Phil Nevin is as a person. I even said it before. I guarantee you Aaron Boone's a good guy. Aaron Boone is a shit manager who is not a leader. And if he is on a scale of leadership, it falls to the side of weakness. Of weak. His measure would be weak. Just based off his comments alone. Just based off how he allows players to screw up all year. Kevin Kernan wrote an amazing piece today regarding all of this when it comes to Aaron Boone 
and when it comes to Phil Nevin at, over at Ball Nine. So give that a, give check that out. Check that article out. Ball Nine, they'll have it on their Twitter. Look them up, you'll find it. Kevin Kernan does a tremendous job. Breaks all that stuff down. I don't like to write, obviously, so I like to rant and I like to talk. I don't always like to be mad, but I'm like in a state of shock with where we are in society when apparently being a nice guy allows you not to be criticized. But if certain people think you're a bad guy, it's open season. Break out the guns. It's, oh, it's hunting season, folks. Go get the bad guy. Even though the bad guy is winning. But yeah, let's, let's, let's attack the bad guy. He's doing better for all of us on his team. But let's go after the bad guy because, you know, that's okay to do. Aaron Boone's too nice to say he obviously shouldn't be back next year. Brian Cashman obviously shouldn't be back again. How many screw-ups do you get just because you have a couple of World Series titles under your belt? Joe Torre wore his welcome out. He had World Series titles. Why is he not allowed to continue to be manager forever? Well, then again, the press corps is a lot different back then. Uh, speaking of press corps, are you guys ready to hear from Mr. Softy himself? Brandon Cuddy. It should be Brandon Cunty. That's what his name should be. Brandon Cunty. So that's how I'll announce him as Brandon Cunty. Here's a tweet. Mod on. I don't even want to read it. I'm going to read it like he wrote it. Okay, crying. <laughs> I watched as Red Sox fans harassed Garrett Cole, holding up a container of spider tack and a Kermit the Frog puppet. And they hurled all kinds of unprintable words at the Yankees ace during his pregame warm-up. I recorded it. Here's the video and the story. Are we losing it? Have we lost our minds as a society? Have we gone this friggin' soft that there's anybody who would give any relevance to this at all? And on top of that, he's a hypocrite. And on top of that, he's a hypocrite. So anyway, here's my response to Brandon Cuddy. Who gives an F? Why are we like this for? These are the same people who refuse to ask Boone any question of significance. Our beat writers are weak as F. Oh my God, Red Sox fans call cold names. It's horrible. Go hide in a closet. Hide in the closet, Brandon Cunty. What are you doing? Here's also... This is from May 4th, guys. Brandon Cunty. Here's the hypocrite, folks. You ready for this? Yankee fans told Jose Altuve he sucks right to his face. Watch the video. Hypocrite much there, Cunty? Hypocrite much? There's actually more. Let me see. Oh, here's, here's another response, okay? Somebody, I'll, I'll even say it. At Ballpark Fantas 1, wrote to Brandon Cuddy, I see a whole lot of nothing here. Man up, pitch, and take your Yankee money. Mr. Cunty responds and says, Imagine doing your job while people are literally two feet away and hurling personal insults and cursing at you. I'm not saying Cole isn't used to it at this point. I'm saying it was eye-opening to experience it. Yet, Remind you that Brandon Cuddy had no problem showing video of Yankee fans close to Altuve saying he sucks. But let's see, there was even more. Somebody really destroyed him. And now I let me see if I can find it. Oh yeah, here we go. Um Okay, that was that one. Wait, there was another one here somewhere. Maybe I can't find it right now, but it was really good and it really shut him down. I mean it made him look like a complete moron. I should have saved it while I was here. But anyway, he has a history of doing this himself. Um, oh, whatever the guy wrote, the guy wrote something. Oh, how many times he knocked. It was basically regarding him knocking Garrett Cole. So saying Cole, whatever, blah, 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 blah. But you know, he's safe because he does it behind a keyboard. So all that's okay. He could do it behind a keyboard. But, but oh, we're going to sit here and act like Yankee fans don't do it with the Red Sox fans. The other, uh, 
are we also going to forget that a Yankee fan threw a baseball and hit, uh, what's his face, Verdugo in the outfield? Uh, are we going to act like every home team, Philadelphia, doesn't bl- plaster the uh, opposing pitcher? The Yankees don't plaster the opposing pitcher? This is all new? Brandon Cuddy comes out, I just feel so horrible. This sums up the Yankee media. This is it. But this is why they get away with it. This is, this guys, I'm not even joking with you. My motivation of NYY News to build this thing up like nothing you've ever seen before is for you, the fan. Because we don't get good media no more. We don't get the truth. We're not allowed to have it. Yankee Planet, uh, uh, their PR guy, Zillow, I think his name's, whoever the hell it is, these guys have basically become the modern-day Mr. Softies in the corporate world. They should start the press conference with the do 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 It's time for Mr. Softy. That song should play before Aaron Boone walks in and the, 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 the Lindsay Adlers and the Cunties who make out with each other with mask on come in the room and ask bullshit questions because God forbid they have the balls to ask Aaron Boone a legitimate question because I guess either they can't or they fall right in line because what do they care for? But this is who we get to read articles about. This is who is live tweeting games that we want to get information from. Brandon Cunty. I felt so bad how they were talking to, to Garrett Cole. Can you imagine making $36 million and somebody yells you suck? But like a, but like a good little bitch boy, but like a good little bitch boy, Brandon Cuddy does the same thing. He never responded to those tweets, of course, because he's a hypocrite. But many of these people are. That's how they are. That's called phony. Guess who will never be phony? Me. I don't want Yes Network money. I don't need the New York Yankees. I'm a real fan. And I want to give a platform to you too, the real fan, where we don't have to worry about censoring bullshit. We don't have to worry about kissing ass. We don't have to worry about, oh my God, Aaron Boone and Phil Nevin are nice guys. Guys, I'm a nice guy, in my opinion. Does that mean you guys shouldn't disagree with me? Of course not. Disagree with me if you feel you're I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure if you go up to Aaron Boone and go, hey, Aaron, people think you're a nice guy. Should that stop me from being criticized? I think Aaron Boone would say, no, of course not. I should be criticized. Apparently, Phil Nevin is too good to be criticized or to even come out himself and go, yeah, I was wrong. Or I did make a mistake. It really did cost us. He gets mad at Hall of Fame players like Alex Rodriguez, who apparently, you know, really never been in that situation before. That's what we're dealing with here, folks. People like Lindsey Adler. Hey, Aaron, Aaron Judge, question. This is Lindsey Adler. You think tomorrow morning the sky will be blue? You think Bronxy deserves a bigger cage? Brandon Cunty, crying in a closet somewhere, talking about a fan. They were yelling expletives at Aaron at, at, at Garrett Cole. Oh my God, because he's the first Yankee pitcher that got yelled at in Fenway Park. We are stupid. We are stupid. Our society is lifting up Idiotic voices. It's that simple. Non-realistic, soft as hell voices. And then people wonder why, hey, look, no managers get fired. 
Everybody's allowed to do their job badly. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Do your job poorly. Who cares? Well, that's society even outside of baseball, unfortunately. But that's the world we're living in right now. Because enough voices, you know, don't come out and talk about it. But also, when you do, you might get censored by the nerds above. Unbelievable, guys. Unbelievable. Phil Nevin, my God, man. Take a little accountability for yourself. It was a bad play. It was a, ba it was a horrible send. You did it all year. That's what makes it even worse. Is you act like your calls have been spot on all year, man. You've been wrong all year. Be a man. Be upfront about it. And say, even if you said, hey, you know, when I saw this, I read this, I thought it would work. After seeing the replay or so, it was a bad call. I shouldn't have made it. It hurt us badly. That's all. Cost of your job. And if it doesn't, might as well not even pay attention to the season next year. Guys, again, for Team NYY News, Pete Simonetti. Thank you, guys. Talk to you soon. Yeah.